Okay, Frontliners, we are back with our review of File 13. Okay, this is Issue 1 and Issue 2. Again, I had been exhibiting at Eternal Con under my own uh, Argo Comics uh, banner. And I uh, always try to take a look to see new indie stuff. Uh, for me, going to uh, Comic-Cons, that's usually what I'm looking for. Artist Alley, looking for the incredible artwork that's within there. And also to pick up uh, comics from... Uh, I'm not really a print guy. I know that's overrun a lot of the conventions these days. Just prints, prints, prints. And I do like some prints. But uh, for the most part, uh, I'm looking for some new uh, reading material that I won't be able to find, uh, you know, along every uh, store shelf. All right, so, File 13. Okay, it is it is a superhuman story. We see here on the cover this armored guy fighting with a werewolf. And within this story, they are the main characters. Um, the story is set in Long Island, where I hail from, so that I had not uh, really seen uh, previously in comics. Uh, and I will say uh, a nice job on the artwork. Storytelling is good. Artwork is clear. As always, I try to give you a peek into that. I just don't want to do it on any pages that really spoil too much, but that is one of the main objectives here on YouTube, is being able to give you a look at that artwork, uh, being that if I had a digital file right now, I would only be able to describe it. Um, so, pretty much uh, get some background as to uh, the origins of these two uh, characters. Uh, the story jumps around a bit with uh, time frames as to, you know, one week earlier, six months earlier, stuff like that, which uh, gives you some background as to what uh, the course of events that lead you to the present uh, story. Um, and what I was really enjoying after I had gotten done with this, you know, very good story, is the fact that we had like a, uh, I'll show you this, making of a page, which kind of, this writer actually uh, draws out some thumbnails, and uh, I guess even goes to a point of lettering it so that the artist will know uh, where not to kill himself writing a, uh, uh, or drawing rather some detailed background, which is a, you know, pretty good idea. Um, I'm always making notes to the uh, artist saying that this is a lot of dialogue, so just keep in mind uh, where you might place it. But this is even, I guess, going to a next step where you actually uh, get the uh, thumbnails up to uh, full size and letter it. Um, yeah, what's the pages prior to that? Oh, we had a thank you, thank you note from the company. So, some pretty good stuff there. Uh, apparently, it was a successful Kickstarter before, so we got a list of names of people who had contributed. Um, and we have kind of like a uh, sketchbook section with some of the characters that will uh, play a part. In actuality, that is kind of what caught my eye, is that they had a print showing some of these future characters, and since they're making a print and publicizing it, I won't feel I'm spoiling by letting you see this. And, you know, it was a, quite a cast they had going there, and it kind of got me interested in uh, what's going on. So, um, some of them look a little super heroic. We got a dude here in a cape. We got this girl in the uh, 
red and yellow superhero type costume. Um, you know, always a big superhero fan. But then we had some real, like, you know, dinosaur with a, you know, buffalo. Looks like a judge of some sort. More superhero type looking character. Uh, just a variety. It was a good variety of uh, characters. Looks like they're doing a good job in unfolding it slowly. Um, you know, I believe we have the armored character. I would imagine that is him. Whereas he starts out pretty much uh, starting out in pretty much a trash can. Right there. And uh, it's, uh, you know, I, again, I read issue two as well. So we got kind of an evolution of the armor um, by the time it appears here, which is, like, again, very cool that they're taking the time to uh, do that. Um, and as this cover probably uh, shows you, well, there's the armor right there. But we have a couple of giants uh, fighting. And I'm actually curious as to the fact that um, this guy was absorbing people, so he's a giant. And now we had this guy who showed up on the scene who it seems like he was kind of unexpectedly turned into a giant. So I don't know if he has kind of powers to mimic other superpowers within the area, perhaps. Uh, because it didn't seem like he was prepared to turn gigantic. Um, and in our preview on the back, seems like he's not gigantic anymore. And we have the uh, giant grabbing him by the with a hand. Um, so let me see. I'll give you a little look see into a page of this issue. Again, Long Island setting. We have something uh, happening though on the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, as the story opens, and I guess this is a good, I already said that that dude was absorbing people, so you kind of get a look at, I'll pan back here, this is nice uh, double page spread there. Um, so, as I said, all works nice, coloring is a good job as well. Uh, you know, I didn't see uh, any problems with the lettering. Sometimes, you know, initial books, you'll have that, uh, you don't know which one's speaking first, or everything seems to be well-placed uh, within the uh, story. And the story, uh, I think, picks up a little steam in issue two. Uh, we get a little bit in the back. Again, I like these uh, added uh, things within the background. Um, with Within the back of the book, rather, the background. Can Man apparently was the initial idea. Like, I have, of course, uh, drafts of my books from grade school or junior high or whatever. Um, high school. So, yeah, we do get a little look see at the adventures of can man which is apparently you know at least an inspiration of uh where the armored character comes from um actually the armored character's last name is solson which i remember uh i didn't know if there was any inspiration from solson comics uh which i remember being a uh small company that put out some how-to books as far as uh, drawing comics and such. Uh, I just thought it was an interesting uh, parallel there. Um, so, get a little epilogue where we're back on the werewolf, so he wasn't forgotten, which I was happy to see. Uh, Overall, I will say, which is the biggest test of all with any comic, that I uh, am looking forward to number three 
and seeing where the story goes. So, oh, well, I should also just give credit where credit is due. So, let's see. Issue 1 doesn't really have a credits page as such. I don't know if issue 2 does. Yes. Okay. So, the story is Dan Hosick and Keith Koppenhofer, and the art is Ryan Gutierrez. Um, and uh, you have the story by Dan and Keith, and within the back of issue one, uh, Dan kind of breaks down as to how the uh, writing chores are handled. Uh, again, which I really liked that uh, that whole behind the scenes thing. And you know, every comic is going to be unique in how it's uh, brought about. And you'll see writing teams, and uh, in this respect, it's more like general plot is considered between the two, and then one goes more into the full script. Um, because, again, sometimes that division is with the artist in mind also. Sometimes, again, the old Marvel style of doing scripts, you'll have uh, a basic plot outline, and then the artist is practically writing it. Um, so, as you can see, on this one, as I showed you the pages in issue one, you're actually getting thumbnails from the writer, which is another method that uh, I don't think they really lock the artist into uh, following the angles and such. Um, I've often uh, done thumbnails myself just upon an artist's request when they're unsure of uh, what I was trying to convey within the script. Um, sometimes I've uh, gone that route, but I believe that even within this little uh, description, uh, Dan does make mention of the fact that uh, he's been doing a bit less of the thumbnails, and the artist is, of course, getting a feel for uh, the story and character, so they could probably uh, go right down there uh, to their own uh, sense of pacing and, and such, and angles and everything like that. All right, so that'll leave off with file 13, 1 and 2, and uh, keep coming back to Comic Frontline for all your comics, news, reviews, and entertainment, and feel free to check out my own channel, Argo Comics, A-R-G-O Comics, uh, where you can see a little bit of background of the uh, books I have made. Thanks for watching.